Hello and welcome to another video. This is a quick time lapse slash walkthrough of how I make this scene. I was just having a wonderful cup of tea with some biscuits, so I decided to model it. Let's begin. Now I'm not exactly using a reference image for this thing, so you can sort of see the design process where I make something that looks hideous and then iterate on it and make it look better over time. That's pretty much how you do most 3D modeling projects, by the way, even character design. Making a good looking cup is fairly simple, but I prefer adding in some modifiers before I give it a shape. And the modifiers have to be in this specific order. So the first modifier you add is the solidify modifier, followed by the bevel modifier, and then you add your subsurface divisions. The reason the bevel modifier is after the solidify modifier is so I can have some beveled edges at the top rim of the cup. The handle for the cup is simple to make. I just select a couple of the faces on the side, resize them a little bit, and then I extrude them out to make the actual handle for the cup. To attach the bottom part of the handle to the cup, I select edges and press F to create a face between them. Once you're done creating all the faces, it's considered good practice to merge by distance to make sure that there are no multiple vertices in your mesh. Playing around with the handle, I noticed that the bevel modifier wasn't acting how I wanted it to act, so I had to increase the angle value from 30 to 45 to give the handle a nice smooth curve. Using the extrude option to actually create the handle caused an empty hole on the inside of the cup that I had to fill in. The shading for the face that I just created was off, so I figured it's a good time to select everything and calculate the normals outside of the cup. Although this area still wasn't perfect, it was going to be under the liquid in the cup, so I didn't really care for it. Don't model anything that no one's going to see. Creating the tea is insanely simple, since it's not going to be a transparent cup, you don't really need to model the entire shape of the liquid, you just need something at the top, and that's what I did. This is also when I noticed that the handle was a bit thin, so I had to thicken it up a little bit. The material for the tea itself didn't really take much effort, but over here, the only reason I'm doing it, so I have something to look at instead of everything being plain white. I changed the material index in the solidify modifiers rim option so that I can add a golden rim to the cup's top edge. Making a plate doesn't really need a lot of work. You simply add in a circle, extrude it, scale it up, delete the top face, and then you add in the same modifiers that I used for the cup earlier. The solidify modifier, the bevel modifier, and the subsurface division. With just a little bit of tweaking, the plate was looking good enough for now. This is when the background got a bit annoying. I added in a backdrop to give it some depth. Playing around with the plate didn't really get me anywhere. I ended up extruding the interfaces down a little bit, and that pretty much fixed it. It was good enough. Making the biscuit is also easy. You add in a circle, fill it in, inset it to avoid any artifacts, and then you add the same three modifiers we added earlier. Solidify, bevel, subsurface division. Placing the biscuit on the cup's side, I thought of presentation a little bit. I first wanted to do something a bit messy, where the biscuits are scattered somewhat randomly by hand, but then I quickly realized that that's not really the perfect way to do it. If I'm gonna go for this fake advertisement look that's really trashy and it looks bad, then I might as well go all in on this. So I added in an empty, used that empty as the array modifier's object offset, and then spread the biscuits in a complete circle around the cup. This is also when I decided to add in some materials. I added a noise texture, passed it through the bump map, attached the normal map to the principal BSDF's normal map, played around with the scale, the detail, and the distortion a little bit, and turned down the strength on the bump node. This gave me a rough texture that I was kind of happy with at the time. I do improve it later on though. Since this is a Zira biscuit, Zira is called cumin by the way in English, I do want some sprinkles on top of it, and I use the particle system in Blender to achieve that. 
I do run into quite a few issues initially with the particle system. The particles weren't appearing on all of the biscuits. The face normals were pointing in all the wrong directions, so I had to quickly fix that. I first had to enable use modifier stack in the particle system because otherwise the particle system wouldn't use the array modifier. I applied the solidify modifier even though I didn't really need to. And since I only want particles on top of the biscuit, I had to create a new vertex group with those vertices so I could control where the particles spawn. Turning on backface culling let me know that the normals are all facing the wrong direction, so I had to recalculate them outside, and this finally fixed the particle system. The particle itself is nothing but a low poly cylinder whose edges have been extruded outward and then scaled down. I then set up the particle system to render the particle I had just made, and then change the rotation settings to randomize it a little bit. I also played around with some of the other settings, but it didn't really get me anywhere. Since the seeds are super small, the material for them didn't really matter, it's just a noise texture passed through a color ramp. Next up, I changed the material for the blade and then moved on to the backdrop. I tried a bunch of different combinations, but then realized that I should probably do that afterwards. So instead of using the lamp that I was using, like the sun lamp, I added in an HDRI. There is a link to the HDRI I used in the description down below. And while you're down there, subscribe. I do make stuff like this all the time. Not all the time, just whenever I can. Once I had the HDRI in, I didn't really need the sun lamp anymore, so I just got rid of it. The biscuits were looking a bit bland and monotone because obviously it was just a single color. So I ended up passing the same noise texture that I used for the noise through another color ramp to determine, well, the color of the biscuits. I also changed the scale of the noise map over here a little bit. This is also when I switched over to the cycles renderer to take a look at it. And for something that I didn't really spend a lot of time on, I was pretty happy with it. It was good enough. Moved the camera a little bit, changed the scene around, changed the color of the backdrop, just changed tiny things here and there. And I decided that I won't actually know what's wrong with this until I start doing proper render. So that's what I did. I didn't really let the first render finish, so I can't show it to you, but it was super bland. The biscuits and everything looked so washed out, I decided to go back in and change the texture for the biscuits once more. Otherwise, it was just gonna look the same. So I played around with the scale of the noise map and I kind of reached a point where I thought, okay, so this is still too perfect, but at least it can pass as a CGI biscuit. This is also when I got sick of the flat backdrop that I was using and I added in a reflective plane because I was using an HDRI that plane would in theory reflect the entire room and it ended up you know looking pretty good and that it actually ended up doing what I wanted it to do. That one biscuit in front that was pointing straight at me it was really messing with me so I ended up rotating the entire array and then I did my first render to see how it looks. This time I actually let it finish. Almost immediately I noticed that whatever the surface is that the biscuits are on, it needs to change. It's just too simple, it's too flat, there is absolutely nothing going on over here. So let's fix that. I added in a plane and just started to texture it because that's pretty much all you do. It was really simple, I used a Musgrave texture combined with a noise texture and tweaked the values a little bit and achieved this somewhat abstract look, which I was happy with. I added in some color ramps to use the metallic and roughness notes of the principled BSDF as well. Once I was happy with how everything looked, well, how the napkin looked, I guess you can call it a napkin, I decided that I need some imperfections in it. So what I ended up doing was I added in some subdivisions to it and just used proportional editing to lift up the corners a little bit and I deleted some vertices along the edges so that way it looks like there's cuts in it. Now I did use subsurface divisions on the napkin because yeah I'm bending it and stuff and I want it to be smooth so that meant I had to sharpen the entire outer edge so it wouldn't get you know smoothened out into rounded corners. I wanted sharp corners. 
And finally, I get to my second render, which is my second last render, because on these projects, I don't really like spending a lot of time. It's just supposed to be, well, exercise. And then I finally get to this render. And what I ended up realizing was that the color is just, it just looks washed out. So I ended up changing the color management option in the render tab to, well, very high contrast and got my final render, which I'm happy with. Now, this is by no means perfect, but I just wanted to do this as a mental exercise because I'm bored. There's nothing better to do. Pick up something random, render it. I was eating these biscuits, by the way. So, yeah. Feel absolutely free to like this video. Actually, go down there and do that right now. And feel free to subscribe. I don't have a proper format down yet. Sometimes I do really long tutorials. Sometimes I do super quick ones that people scream at me for being too fast. But I like making this stuff. So, do whatever you want.